ready, Freddy. Okay, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me introduce our speaker, Janet Gadauti, a clinic psychologist, founder, CEO, accurate body language. Janat has 20 years of corporate business, marketing research, advertising, strategic branding positioning, and also clinic psychology experience. She specializes in understanding the complexity of human behavior, interpersonal relations, verbal and nonverbal body language communication. Jeanette will be presenting how awkward body language gets you to closer to the ears, right? So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Jeanette. Thank you. Ready, set, go. Let me see the ears. Come on, ears. And give it a give a hand to the hands. And keep your eye on the ball. Keep the eyes. Google for us. And you have to have a stomach for it. you to take the picture because you're right in a good position it's location 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 right um i can't uh, i'll open my camera right now can okay. you send the picture to holly here i can get it to her too sure okay can, can, just can you hold the brain we're, like we're going tight here tight got it Ooh, you got all the senses? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Give it up for the brain. The teeth. The gut. <laughs> and the hand. Everybody, what you saw is the secret to body language. It's the secret, baby. You have to use all five of your senses. And to start off, use your what? Brain. 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 And don't underestimate Billy. <laughs> gut. We all know what we're talking about. You have that strange feeling in your gut. Should I date him? Uh, right? <laughs> Trust your what? Good. And use your what? Brain. Brain. Ladies and gentlemen, you all were body language experts when you were babies when you were babies, before you were born. Because anything your mom was consuming, you were tasting. You heard the muffled sounds of her environment. If she was under stress or using substances, guess what? You were too. And studies show that hours after a newborn is born, that baby can correctly identify the mama from the taste, the smell, her milk, and the presence. So you guys were body language experts when you were babies. And then when we grew up, what did we become? Amateurs. My job is to have you reclaim your natural fluency, reclaim your birthright, reclaim your original language, which is body language. But what do we do? As adults, we now focus on words, but words lie and words soften. The truth, look at your whole body. Now look at your neighbor's body, but don't be creepy about it, <laughs> okay? The truth is in right here. I recently uh, analyzed Alex Murdoch. Anybody know that story? Can you believe that story? But the truth was always in his body. 
and what he was saying and not saying. Like what he wasn't saying was, whatever it takes, I'm gonna find the killer. He already knew who the killer was. He didn't need, and everybody else in town was searching and he did nothing. That's a big red flag. So it is not impossible. It is possible to reclaim your natural fluency. And how do we do that? Well, whenever you're interacting with other people, it's all about psychology and persuasion. Billy's an expert. We all are experts at persuading people to get to the yes. Remember when we were toddlers? We did a lot of persuading then, right? Often we heard no, <laughs> no, no, but we, we tried, right? So what you saw in the intro was discovering and activating your senses. We rely too much on the auditory, but I want you to, right? Look at the hands. Always, always, you have to know what the feet are doing in the hands. So look at your feet. Now look at your neighbor's feet. Don't be creepy about it. <laughs> you start with the feet, feet first. Because look, where are my, where are my 10 toes? And directing towards Billy and Deborah, right? When you're engaging with others and interacting with others, you have to know where those 10 toes are. Now, if, if I'm talking to you, and five of my toes are pointing to the exit, right? That's a big clue. You have to figure out, okay, what, what is Jeanette trying to tell me with her five toes? So if you really want to still engage with me, you have to get me to move my body towards you or join me, join me as we exit to keep our engagement, okay? Is, is that a, a good way, though, if you need to lead the conversation? Yes. yes. It's like your toes kind of, will know. You're kind of hinting to him yes. that you've got to go. Even if you didn't even know that your toes were pointing that way, your body, your brain is sending messages, got to go, got to go, before you even know that your toes are pointing. That's why you can rely on what the body is telling. Even, even distancing or coming towards, you know, after the presentation, I, I gave birthday boy, upcoming birthday boy a hug, right? So you go towards things you enjoy, you move back from what you don't enjoy. And thank you so much for that. I, I minored in psychology. Yes, that, it's all psychology. Yeah. That being said, in the virtual world that we live in and like everyday work, if the person availability availability is very important. Yes. And if you are there and you're present, I'd rather go see you and speak with yes. you than to try to type. And the reason being is based off what you had just explained to us, is that I want to understand if I have your attention. Yes. Something that we're speaking of. And I don't we can share words back and forth, but some things are more important than others, of course. And I want to I'm sure that we're on the same page. Exactly. And depending on the subject matter and the port importance, it, it might be okay on a telephone or a Zoom call, or it must be it live, like a marriage proposal, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be face to face. Yes, the availability piece is very important. Yes. If you're there, I'd rather have that conversation if the option is there, <laughs> because I would leave that conversation knowing that. You know, either we agreed upon or disagreed. It doesn't matter, but we had that conversation together. Yes. Now, what is your name? Damon. Damon. If everybody was watching Damon as he was talking, even though we don't see below his waist, you can read his hand gestures and know he was credible. Okay. So his I hand, because you, you want to look feet first. And what, what did cops say? Show me your hands, okay? You always have to know where those hands are. And when he was describing the situation, he was using hand illustrators. So the illustrators must be in sync with the words, like in, I, I'm not musical, but 
in tempo, a fraction before the words. Now, if he's saying something and his hand gestures are off, right? You, that's a hot spot. And we're going to talk about hot spots. Now, everybody do this. Like you're in a Zoom box, okay? Even though you're on a Zoom call, okay? I was watching Alex Murdoch on YouTube and I knew he was lying. All right. Because his shoulders gave it away. Everybody do a single shoulder shrug, okay? And unless you're flirting. <laughs> Oh, that, that's unusual. Normally we do a subtle shoulder, double shoulder shrug. That's more credible, okay? Hey, where do you wanna to go to for dinner? You know, I don't know, What's, whatever sounds good. Did you take the money? Uh, no. <laughs> you got a cluster to clue, then we'll even talk about that. And, okay, turn to your neighbor and blink a lot. A lot. Okay. How many times have you really noticed the blink rate when you're talking to your kid or your grandkid or your spouse <laughs> and you see lots of this? We're going to talk about how to analyze body language, even if you're on a Zoom call. And everybody likes Zoom now because then you don't have to travel, right? Okay. We're going to identify ease and dis-ease. And your name? John. Hi, John. You alluded to what the behavior plans are. Yes. And you said you're not physical, but I am a physical person. And I constantly have a beat at my neck. They're always moving around. My hands always moving around. Yes. Like, how do you discern that from? That's your baseline, John. Okay. You got the groove going on. No. And you got music. I, I admire people. Oh, right on. Thank you. Yeah. When's your next gig? <laughs> you got to start it up. Yeah. It, yeah. So if you know John and you always hear him singing or, you know, be bopping, then you know it's his baseline. But when he stops, when you ask him, did you kill so and so? Now that's a hot fly, right? Okay, so we're going to talk about how to put it all together. And it's easier than you think because you knew it when? Before you were born. Before you were born. So I, I want to see that picture. Who took the picture? Yeah, that's going to be a stellar. I want up you on my LinkedIn picture, baby. <laughs> right? Right? right. This right. Is <laughs> okay, so you see all the fun in that. Oh, I forgot the lips. Oh, no, I was the lips right there. Okay, everybody, with your left hand or your right hand, pulsate L. Look, listen, and learn. Look, listen, and learn. Because when you're talking, who is, who is the mouth? Damon? Yes. When you're talking too much, you're not doing what? Where are my ears? Uh, I have ears. She's giving my ears. <laughs> You're not doing what? Listening is more important than talking in many aspects because you already know what you want to say most of the time. When we listen and observe, we're discovering. We're discovering. You got to get the intel. And if you're talking too much to your kid, your grandkid, your spouse, or your team, right? You're not doing what? Discovering. And I bet that's a big part of leadership is listening, okay? Talk less, listen more. Oh, watch out. When you're interacting with anybody, you have to use all five of the senses that you saw from the, from the start, even the nose. Because if something smells funny, you got to investigate. And we don't even think about the nose, but perfume manufacturers have thought about the nose. And that probably leads in the five senses, and we don't even know it. Dogs have a nose for nose. 
okay? So you have to be present. You have to absorb everything. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to be a sponge, to be a sponge. Absorb everything, because the more you absorb, the closer you get to the yes, the closer you get to the truth. If you're not observing, then you're missing out. Now, there are a lot of people who don't have good eye contact when they're interacting with other people because they're shy or it's part of their culture or they're being um, um, respectful or subservient, right? I recommend that you increase your, your respectable eye gaze so that you're checking out what's being conveyed to you and the other person doesn't even know they're doing it. Alex Murdoch didn't know he was blinking fast or Alex Murdoch didn't know he was adjusting the mic whenever he was faced with a tough, uh, a tough question from the prosecutor. Your body reacts faster than your cognitive brain can process it. So absorb everything. And from head to toes, the body always shows the truth. It can't lie because the brain, who is the brain? the operation. The brain sends impulses to your entire nervous system to react, to live, to survive. And it's faster. Your central nervous system is faster than, okay, everybody feel your forehead. Faster than your most evolved part of your brain, which is cognitive executive load. That's why you trust the body. All right, now how does detecting and decoding body language get you to the yes? Because in the moment, in the heat of the moment, you're getting intel, you're getting intel. And if you see discomfort or unease, then you can navigate that through with your leadership skills, with your communication skills, with your conflict resolution skills, with your emotional intelligence, so that you don't blow the deal. Body language and statement analysis and psychology helps you seal the deal, helps you get to the yes. And all of this is psychology and persuasion and leadership. And you will convey a greater sense of leadership when you use all five of your senses. And it gets you closer to the yes, closer to the yes. So, and your name? Kelsey. Kelsey? Um, yeah, so something that I struggle with is, you know, you're in a very fast-paced environment. We have a lot of meetings, a lot of things to get done. And I struggle when um, the meeting doesn't have a um, clear focus. Oh, you know, yes, focus. And I'll be honest, it makes me, like, physically uncomfortable. Yes. So I, just, I feel the need to, like, you know, get the group back on track. And then I worry that maybe it's coming across as, like, I'm directing the meeting, like, or I'm not listening. But I, yeah, I'm struggling to get everyone on the same page. How you can do that is, okay, show us your best smile. Turn to your neighbor. Smile. Nod your head. Nod your head. Tilt your head as you try to guide the other members of the team. Okay? All right? This, uh, as Billy knows, is a sale. Persuade. You will buy that million dollar contract. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Who can power struggle when you're smiling, right? And you're nodding your head. These are friendship signals. And do this. Everybody, lift your eyebrows. When you see a friend, hey, hi, Jason, when's your next gig, right? So use these nonverbals to get you to the yes, right? Now, every day, every day, what did, uh, what did Billy talk about? Uh, leaders solve problems, right? So we're faced every day with CPR. Like we, <laughs> challenges, problems, and resistance every day. And that's before you get out of the house, <laughs> right? With your kids or your spouse. Or, you know, trying to blow your hair and put on makeup or get dressed. Or the dogs, they're fur babies. So CPR, 
body language and detecting deception and getting to the truth helps you overcome and stay alive. It gives you the CPR. It gives you, it keeps your lifeline going so you can keep on beating to the tempo, okay? All right, pretend like you are a scale. We want ease. So lift up your dominant hand towards ease. And, but we might see dis-ease, okay? So when you're engaging with someone, you're constantly looking. What is your name? Shelly. Is Shelly is Shelly showing me ease or dis-ease indicators? Ease or dis-ease, right? Is Damon showing me ease or dis-ease? Is John, when I'm talking to John, is he showing me ease or dis-ease? Now, your name again? Kelsey. Kelsey. When Kelsey is in a meeting and she's sensing that it, it's not a clear agenda, your best remedy for that is to show calm confidence and, and turn it around. Even though you might feel, uh-oh, this is going you know, askew, you do not want to show that in your body language. You look like you're tall. Are you, how tall are you? Five eight. Five eight. So be the ballerina that you are, claim the space, smile, and, and then get back on point. I'm small, I'm fun size. I'm, I wish I were five eight. But when I come into the room, I claim the room. Not from my physical sense, but from my smile, my energy, my vibe, and my knowledge and my confidence. So always convey confidence. You all need to show ease, confidence, calm, leadership. And your objective is to get the other person to feel more at ease with you because that's how you get them to the yes. That's how you get them to do what you want them to do. Okay, so I have a question. So if you are naturally... Uh, uh, speak up. Oh, they can hear you. Oh, oh, sorry. So if you are naturally wanting to do something physical... Yes. ...that you think probably isn't appropriate, you have to... Are you saying you have to consciously change... Your what mindset. you would naturally do. Yes, you have to have a calm, confident mindset, calm, confident vibe. So you have to like take a minute and recognize yes. that. And yes. then intentionally show your body language. Yes, yes. Which may not feel natural for that moment. You are resetting your mindset. Amy Cotter, uh, Amy Cuddy uh, is a social psychologist. And she said before her presentations, because she's an anxious person, she would go in the bathroom and do a power pose. So whatever your power pose or meditation or prayer, and you're positively affirming yourself that you're going to kill it. You got to knock it out of the park, right? You got to psych yourself up because uh, Olympic athletes visualize success in their mind. And if you believe it, as if it is, then your body will embrace it as well. Wonderful question. Okay, everybody, show me a C. C for comfort, connection, and congruency. You need to get that other person comfortable with you. Nobody wants to buy if they're uncomfortable with you. You have to create a connection. Billy was wonderful in creating a connection through your stories that everybody could relate to. Oh, and he got us up. He had body language. And he, when he said, turn to the left, you should have said, uh, Jeanette, the other left. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Okay. But see what he was doing? If he felt like um, the audience needed to be more energetic, he got us to stand up to wiggle our fingers and he got us to have that wonderful stretch use body language baby and then that shifted the energy so if you feel that the person you're interacting with is 
showing you discomfort, get them up. And then when you're walking, Deborah, can I have you as my uh, model? Yes. So I'm, I'm trying to convince Deborah of something. So as we're, and she was showing me distress signals. So I got her up. Now just, just walk, let's walk together from here to there. You see what I'm doing? Matching. Thank you, Deborah. Give it up for Deborah. When you're side by side, it's called matching. You want a match. Yes, yes. You want to match her tempo, her cadence. If she's a soft talker, you want to be a soft talker. And her pace. So it took me a while, but I was trying. You have to be subtle about it. I was kind of obvious, but you have to match her walk. This is what Mark Zuckerberg does with all of his guests to steal their ideas. Seriously, hey, let's walk in the garden. Tell me all your secrets. And when they're walking, they're talking and, and the guest doesn't realize what he's given up. So you can do that with a father-son talk. You can do that with a mother-daughter talk. You can do that with your clients, okay? Now, if, if you're not walking, show me that L again. You want to be at an L shape of the, the table. See, John and I, this is too confrontational, right? Got to be at an L or side by side. And if, if you're showing me distress signals, all right, uh, let me have your coffee cup. Deborah, let, let, uh, something about a warm beverage. Love, what kind of tea do you like? Green. Oh, I've got this wonderful green tea. It's warm. Watch what I do. I'm passing a warm beverage to Deborah. The warmth of the feel. Right? Who is Mickey Mouse? Hands. She'll feel the warmth from the green tea from me to her. Now, Let's say this is cold beverage. Let's say this is lemonade. Oh, Deborah, here's your wonderful lemonade. What am I doing? I've placed it down because I don't want cold, sweaty, right? Mm -hmm. To pass from the tumbler to her because that she feels that and that's a negative impression. Uh, yes, yes. And matching on the subject of matching. In this situation, you are the presenter, so we our attention is on you. But I try to be cognizant of when I go to someone's office or whatever. Yes. Um, I either ask to be seated, or if it's flip flopped, I ask the person to be seated because it's a dominance factor. Yes. Can't even talk with them. Yes. I'm speaking with them, so you to be in seated and speaking with them as an equal, it looks <clears> as the feel is better. So I always try to be cognizant of that when I'm entering an office or even if I'm coaching a group or what have you. Do yes. You stand over people or, you know, at least sit with the group and speak to the group. When we're seated, we're all equal. But notice in court, who has the highest seat? Judge. Here come the judge, right? Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. Because she wants or he wants to... You know, have everybody know that it's the honorable judge and that person is in control of the courtroom. Excellent point. Now, matching and mirroring. You are only matching and mirroring neutral, positive, or leadership indicators. It, if Deborah is doing this, I'm not matching and mirroring that. You do not want to match and mirror distress signals. You want to match and mirror neutral, calm, confident, positive indicators. Make sense? Because if they're stressing out, they always need to see you calm and confident, calm and confident, because you wanna create comfort, connection, and congruency. Kelsey. So, um, if someone, if you notice that someone has visibly like shut down in a meeting, they're not open to other ideas, not discussing, is, it, is there a way to salvage it or is it okay? Maybe we need to come back to this. Yes. Um, a break, a physical regroup is one tactic. 
And if you were involved in the conversation, think about the one thing in that heat of the moment that can help the other person open up. And that's different in every situation, you know? If, if you were selling a, a insurance, it might not, you don't want it to be about the features of the policy. You want it to be about how will this improve your family life? Or can you imagine your grandkid graduating from college with the money that you set aside here? Something emotional, emotion sells. So this is outstanding and a lot of things. Give me your question. I used to laugh around when I went into meetings with people and I call them dealing with cave people. Uh -huh. Where they're citizens against virtually everything. What I would have to do is right do these three things to get the point across. And then when I when I really had it, I played catch ball. Because the minute I throw you the ball, <gasps> I know. you have to start talking. And being a tennis. Right. And so you go, you immediately go to here when you got that ball in your hand. And what, what they would say is, she asked for my opinion. She they need to be seen. That's right. And that's, that was it. That was what, because I was thinking, I'm thinking, that's great because I had to do a lot of cave people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fred Flintstone was one of my favorite shows. <laughs> and they used their feet because they didn't have shoes, right? Okay, to get to the truth, you have to create increased ease and elevate dis-ease to comfort, all right? So it's as simple as that. Soften, you're softening your approach by smiling. Everybody open your arms, forward lean, appropriate touches, a handshake, um, eye gaze, googly eyes. What, what is your name? Lauren, Lauren was the googly eyes. And the head nod, everybody nod. Do you find that after COVID, people are still shaking hands? Because I find that school. Yes, um, appropriate touch then. Okay. Hey, John. What instrument do you play? Drums. Oh, ooh. everybody loves the drummer. He got the beat, right? He got the beat. Yes, appropriate touch. Do you ask first? Whatever you know the culture to be or the person like I just met Billy but for some reason I had a hug right right you look and I saw it in his facial expression hey right and I used a positive uh verbal happy birth uh, happy upcoming birthday who doesn't love that except when we're not wanting <laughs> Did you ask? Them? I was just gonna say, I think you can read it from the person. Yes. I would ask maybe if you don't know if it's for a, sure that it doesn't seem that way. I had like I was doing recruiting yesterday, and maybe half and half were wanted the handshake and half. So, so what did you do? Did you put your hand out and then they? So I would, I, I, first. I would kind of as I approached them, see if they were kind of yes. in that direction. Yeah. Okay. Then I would. Read them first, and if you're doing international work. Like you said, you were in Ho Chi Minh City. You have to do some internet uh, research about a proper culture. Okay, everybody, nod your head. Now shake your head this way. In some cultures, the head bobble is a yes. So you have to know, okay, did Dale just tell me yes or no or what? Well, if I did my research, I wouldn't have known. In this culture, it's yes. So when the defendant of premeditated double homicide said, I did, did not kill Paw Paw, what did his head say? And when the prosecutor asked, did you kill Paw Paw? And he says, I would never harm Paw Paw. If I were the prosecutor, I would say, Billy, I didn't ask you. Well, they're dead, so you won't be hurting them now because they're dead. What I asked you was, did you kill Papa? Past tense. But you see how guilty people want to 
sound like they're denying, but it, it was a non-answer. It was a non-denial. I would never harm. And harm is a softening word. John asked me, did I kill, did, did I kill Mr. Jones? Asked me that. Did you kill Mr. Jones? John, I didn't kill Mr. Jones. I don't even know Mr. Jones. Notice how I used a contraction. That was the most important sentence. I didn't kill Mr. Jones. I don't even know Mr. Jones, okay? But guilty people have a real hard time saying, I didn't do it. They will slow it down to, I did not have sexual relations with that <laughs> woman. <laughs> with, with that woman, that woman is a distancing. Like harm, harm is a softening for kill. Okay, so you're you're listening. You're listening to the hot spots. You're watching the hot spots. You see how all these props are your secret to getting to the yes and trust your gut. Trust your gut. It's your second brain. All, all the nerves are in there. Okay, see see these two. Now turn to your neighbor. <laughs> okay. There's hot spots. In this. Okay. Look at the princess. See her smile. Is she at ease? Yes. Look at the prince. Would you say he's e at ease or dis ease in his face and lips? Dis ease. Okay. Even their hands. Hers is soft. Yes. And his is saying stop. So. And what did we say? Watch the hands at all times. Closer to her. Okay. I Everybody pretend like you're the princess and do her hand. Now, I want you to mirror what the prince is doing, even with his lips. Okay. You notice how his fingertips are closer to where? He's blocking his mouth. He's, and it's more of a stop because the paparazzi killed his mom. So he has a different relationship with media than the princess. Now, with you're still mimicking the prince, so your hands are near your mouth. And where's your other hand? Yeah. You see how in the still picture, you already know that the princess is more at ease, and the prince is what? Yes. I think it's a lot going on. You're looking at two different things, and I'm sorry if I'm getting great. Yes, yes. But I think you're looking at two different things. That's okay. The body language right. still shows. This. I don't know what the prince is saying or looking at, but the princess is focused on maybe something differently, and he's probably preventing someone from doing Yes, he's, he's maybe eyeballing somebody, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. Each one of their body language is showing ease or dis-ease. Now look at the body guy. Okay, so mimic, mimic the bodyguard. All right. Always know where the what are. So people might see this, but everybody in this room has like 20 extra tips on just this still picture. Just this still picture. Okay. Oh, and the bodyguard is standing where? Behind them. So who's leading the prince and the princess? He's the support. So placement and proxemics plays into play. Okay. A is antecedent. B is behaviors. C is clustering the clues. Clustering the clues. Remember when we were kids and we played um, put together puzzles? Okay. Pick one, one piece. One piece. Okay, John, pick three pieces. Okay. Billy, grab a handful. Deborah, grab two handfuls. All right. John, uh, John, Tyler, Tyler, please stand up and show us your one puzzle piece. Now, just rub your nose. Just once, rub your nose. That's just one puzzle piece, y'all. His nose might have been itching. All right, don't jump to conclusions when you just have what? One puzzle piece, but often we do. 
Often we do just see one piece. I know he's lying to me because he did this. That's one puzzle piece. And look, his one piece, do we see the whole picture with this one piece? No, but it fits together. It fits together. Now, John, please stand up and show us your three pieces. Three pieces. Okay. Actually, let's do this. Yes. Now, now show everybody. Those are three separate pieces. They may not be you know, connected. And you don't really see the whole picture with the three pieces. So I want you to rub your nose. Show everybody rubbing your nose. Blink faster and then move away. Move away from, yeah, move away from the rest of the people behind, in front of you. <laughs> so that was three puzzle pieces. Three, and, and were they uh, stressful or ease indicators? Right. But you see those three pieces didn't fit. Now, look at here. He got some big hands here. He got a whole bunch of puzzle pieces. So you see, he could, Billy could start clustering the clues, clustering the clues. And he might get three pieces that fit together here that indicate part of the picture. Now, Deborah had <laughs> two palms were, she could reveal more of this picture. Who's gonna get closer to the truth? Who's gonna get closer to the yes? Because she's got intel. So this session is about getting the puzzle pieces, seeing the puzzle pieces. Now the antecedent is the most important thing. We all know John is musical. So if he's, if he's tapping a lot, let's say, because he's a drummer, and chicks didn't drummers, by the way. <laughs> right? All right. right? <laughs> All right. And then you ask him a sensitive question, and then he stops. That's one puzzle piece. Because normally he's bebopping and and you know hearing songs in his head. Okay. Then you observe the behaviors using all five or six or seven of your senses to collect what? The clues. Then you start clustering the clues, like Billy and Deborah had a good chance. If, if there were time, you could cluster and, and maybe a few pieces would fit. All right. And then D is detect and decode distress clues. You're looking for distress or dis ease. Because when you see distress or dis ease, you have to figure out using all of your emotional intelligence and your communication skills and your conflict resolution skills and your leadership skills, how to turn it around. So they feel more um, comfortable with you so that you gain rapport, so that you lead them to the yes. And you're always evaluating these puzzle pieces. Now, you two had a handful and two palms worth of pieces. So as they're looking at each piece, they're figuring out how does it fit? You, you really have to be a, a deception detection detective to figure out, okay, why did John just do whatever? Why did Tyler's ears turn red when I asked him that question? There could be other reasons than your theory. So you're evaluating and investigating, evaluating and investigating. And F is follow through and investigate. You're a detective now. You have to put the pieces together. And if you're missing pieces, let's say um, Billy had five pieces that fit and you had 10 pieces that fit. But if you join forces like law enforcement and the prosecutor, you can put or a witness, you can put more pieces together. So collaborate and get additional information. Okay, establish baseline. If a person is normally nervous, 
you have to consider the jitty, jitty uh, uh, movement. Yeah, as maybe part of their baseline. The knee shaking. The new, yeah. I had a roommate. Um, she always did this. Drove me nuts. <laughs> Seriously. And not only that, but she'd go like this. Uh -huh. And then in high school, um, Mindy Haven, she wore hard contacts. Who grew up in the uh -huh. you know, days of hard contacts? Okay. Now we have LASIK and all that fancy stuff. But back in the day, in the 70s, she would take her hard contact out. Lick it. I'm thinking, oh my God. But that was her what? Right. Now, if it wasn't somebody's baseline and then they're starting to, you know, play with her eye, that's a distress signal. Unless they have debris or an eyelash in here. Okay. You have to uh, develop the baseline. Now, who played baseball when they were a kid? All right, all right. So three set strikes and you're what? Out. So when you're interacting with someone, if within three attempts, they cannot answer your simple yes or no question, are you cheating on me? Well, well, that's a hot spot. <laughs> you you, you ask me, that's not, that's not an answer, right? It's a yes or no answer. So you're giving them three chances to be able to answer your question. A few years ago, there was a woman, uh, or something. She was pretending to be African American. Oh, Rachel, Rachel, Do Rachel, Rachel. Do Rachel. And the news guy asked Rachel, "Are you African American?" Now that that should be a simple question. Deborah, ask me, if, Jeanette, are you Asian? Are you Asian? Uh, <laughs> why would you ask me that? Okay, so the blink rate is one. I backed up, that's two. And I didn't even answer your question. I'm out. I'm out. So right there, Deborah's thinking, why is it so hard for Jeanette to answer such a simple question? So she would continue her conversation with me to gather what? More puzzle pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Now, John asked me, uh, Jeanette, are you Asian? Jeanette, are you Asian? Yeah. yeah look. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned I was born in Saigon, right? You see the difference when there's nothing to hide? Okay. And if there is something to hide, you have to figure out why is Jeanette? Hiding that. You know, that is weird. So cluster the hotspot clues. Are we having fun? Is this helpful? It, you made, when you talked about the woman from the Rachel? ACP, Rachel, and the guy, the, the politician who lied about everything oh, he is. And uh currently or before? Currently. Uh, oh, Santos? Santos. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I just thought I was I remember making the analogy between the two. And you know, this one, what you know, she she was an imposter. Yeah. She got run out of town. Right. This guy's an imposter. He gets elevated. And everyone's kind of you know why too much grace. <laughs> you know why that guy got voted in? Because not not enough voters took my course. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how invaluable uh, these courses are? And, and look at the political environment. Oh my God. Also, when you ask a direct question, then hurt people come at you with filler words. That's more of an aversion. Well, yeah. qualifiers right. are puzzle pieces. Right. Frankly, believe me, honestly. I, you know, those are, well, that's a big hot spot. Okay, regarding Santos and an ordinary liar, all right? People who lie like they breathe. Um, Robert Hare, a psychologist, did and continues to do research on psychopaths. Oh, there goes my brain. <laughs> 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 
he did research on psychopaths and he found out that psychopaths in the incarceration, you know, cause you got a whole bunch of psychopaths there, all right? Their brains are structurally and functionally different than ordinary liars. Santos' brain is up, okay? Okay, <laughs> because his white and his gray matter are the opposite of people with autism. People with autism are more truth-based. They don't have the neural complexities to create all these lies on the fly. Their brains are different. They almost can't help lying because they have no remorse. They have no filter. They have no social conscience. And they're run by their reward part of their brain. And if they don't fear rules because rules belong to everybody else, then they will do um, incredible things that most people would say, oh, I better not jump off that cliff because they're not afraid. They want the money or the greed or the power or the corruption. So see where I'm standing right here? I can't view Santos from my perspective. I have to do what? Step in his what? Shoes. Um, I'm also a alcohol and a drug counselor. So I'm a non-user. Actually, I'm allergic to alcohol. I have this natural antifuse, okay? A lot of Asians do, right? Are, are you allergic as well? Yeah, okay. Okay. So if I, as a non-user, try to understand uh, an addict, oh my God, sister, we just spent $20,000 putting you at Maple Grove and you're out there running again with that loser, right? And using and risking your children, your driver's license, your job. What am I doing? I'm perceiving it from whose perspective? If I step into her perspective, and know that her brain is impaired by the substance abuse and that she is also dominated by her reward system and the fear of the withdrawals. Her, her, if she's not a psychopath, her frontal brain would care about her children, would care about her job, would care about her driver's license, but her brain is now impaired by the substance. So when I stepped into the addict's point of view, then it makes more sense, the motivation. So when I, when I asked Billy the question of, what do you recommend on how to elevate other people's motivation? You have to know what motivates them and speak their language and have them seen, okay? But you all know family members and spouses see it from their fam, uh, perspective, rightfully so, because that's what we know, until they realize what's happening in the brain. Remember, when we walk in with the secret to body language right here, the secret. How's it coming along so far? Good? Good. Good. Okay, see the puzzle pieces? You're looking for discomfort, disagreement, dis deceit distress, dread, disease, okay? My, my partner has Parkinson's, so he has a little tremor. So that would be part of his what? Baseline. Baseline. But if a non-Parkinson's person who doesn't have a tremor, and then all of a sudden I see this and I'm asking him sensitive questions, that's a hot spot. What are we doing? We're collecting what? Clues. What do you Clues. do with that? So you see it. Uh-huh. You, then you go back to the A, B, C, B, E, F. What was A? The antecedent. What just happened that led Billy to start twitching? Right? So what do you do? Smile? Do you? It, it's all based on that moment. Maybe Billy needs to put uh, quarters in his meter. And that's why he's getting nervous. Maybe Billy, 
It depends. It depends on what's going on. You, since you were engaged with that person, know the best way to convey that or continue. Maybe what we only have to do is you don't mirror it. No. Bravo. Because you don't mirror the negative. Correct. Okay. Maybe he has to pick his daughter up from college and he's, you know, right. the conversations. So you might want to ask, hey, Billy, um, are, are you good? Oh, no. Well, Jeanette, actually, I have to go pick up my daughter. Oh, depending on your report. Usually, I have to go to the bathroom. Me too. <laughs> you have to go. One of those things where I do, especially Zoom calls where people go, do you have a minute afterward? And you know, you've got back to back meetings and you have a pizza at five in the morning. You, you cut it. It's all of a sudden, I'm doing You cut it. You're, you cut your, your show 15 minutes prior to that. That's how you stay in control of that. But See all these Ds? That's what you're looking for. Yeah. People aren't seeing it though. And I think it would have it would be nice to just remind each other, like tell me your tell me your antecedent and what's it for. Yes. Like, when you start doing this, why are you doing that? Yes. Depending on who you're interacting with and the situation, you if you're interacting with a friend, you might say, Hey Billy, I noticed that you're you are twitching. You good? Right. They don't even know they're doing it. it. They don't know they're doing it. That's why you're getting intel that the, the person doesn't even know. I know I'm doing it. I'm doing it on purpose. So they can <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you I stand. He's a six foot four prominent. He was a prominent leader in low country. Okay. But on the stand. <laughs> If Billy was the prosecutor and I'm Alex Murdoch, right? And I'm doing a whole lot of this because I got nervous energy. So I'm fiddling with the, and then I'm always looking at the jury because I'm trying to convince the jury instead of talking to the prosecutor. So uh, leadership makes a lot of decisions for you know the people that work for them. And how do you coach like, uh, another member of leadership team, if they're not as good at picking up on some of these things, like you booked me. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say? You booked me. You booked me. <laughs> the information that you just got in the last 40 minutes, you, you guys have exercised your brain and all of these senses to be more what? Alert. Alert. Oh my God. Uh, Alex Murdoch's family members were doing more. His brother cleaned up the brain of Papa. Do you see how the psychopath makes the mess and everybody else what? Cleans it up. But if you were a family member and you took my class and you said, wait a minute, I attended uh, Billy's and Jeanette's classes the other week. I think my brother killed him. You see, it'd be worth the price of both of our classes. What you don't know costs you more than you ever realize. Now we talked about the hands. Okay, now I want you to start fiddling around with yourself. That's pacifying, okay? All right, now I want you to do a chin, chin hold and just nod to your neighbor. That's still good. Because you're evaluating and you're getting chill almost. It looks like it. Okay. I was on a Zoom call. Now everybody near me. And then he started doing this. Go closer to your mouth. And I was friends with that fellow. And I said, don't ever do that on a Zoom call. Okay. Because this year is is Just to let me know, Janet, we are at time. It's, an inter it's break time. I think you can go a few more, but I've just seen somebody else walking in. Okay. Just so you're aware. Uh, um, is my session done? To 1045. Is it 1045? I have like 1045. 1050. Oh. <laughs> From head to toes, everybody. What do you know? Everybody <laughs> tells you the truth. Sure. How was I? Good. Thank you. you guys are awesome. Yeah. Take this information and test it out with your spouse, with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know, because with the next interaction. 
I was thinking about um, my boyfriend and he, when we go out to a restaurant, he does not want to sit across from me. He's very afraid of confrontation. It's too we confrontational. We always sit at the bar. Yes. Always. Side by side. Yeah. My husband, Thank you, husband, everybody. He had an owl with me and I'm like, I can't see your face when you do but that. But you see how strategic yeah. it is? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you. So what about the hands real quick? What about the hands Just notice them. How'd I do, Deb? Awesome. Awesome. Can I capture a testimonial from you guys? Sure. How do we do that? I'm going to videotape it once I get Because it's in the moment, right? Oh, my goodness. You just experienced it. Okay, hold on. All right, Billy, I need you in the mix because right. people may know you and Deborah. Okay. Damon, you'll be in here too. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask you guys. Oh, oh may I... you want me to record it? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Because then my short arms won't. Do you want a horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask how did I do? Okay. Ready? Action. Damon, Billy, Deborah, you just attended How to Get to the Yes for After Body Language. What did you think? How did I do? Jeanette, I thought you did great. Oh, uh, how did how did I do great? What made it great? I learned how to watch for signals from other people. But I also learned how to be aware of my own yeah. messages. That yes, I sent. exactly. And people don't even know the body language indicators that they're giving out. Billy. That went outstanding. Uh, I want to talk about that is how to read the room, understanding your, your emotional intelligence and also the perception of how the people are responding to you. And then how to be effective with that. How to use that as a tool to connect yourself with your audience drive change and what did you enter the room with yeah. trust your gut trust your gut and use your brain That's right. thank you damon for participating and you were an active participant what did you enjoy most and what can you carry forward when you interact with others well what i understand most um and thank you so much for being here is understanding the moment and not just so much the interpersonal, but the intrapersonal and understanding that situation when it occurs. Okay, so if all of us, we're going to rhyme it together. From head to toes, the body always shows and knows the what? <laughs> the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, well, I'm I'm is, there, is there time to go potty? Yeah.